Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 7 of Zero to CSWP. In this episode, all we're going to be doing is taking a look at design tables and how you can use them to configure and create your configurations inside of SolidWorks. Before we get started, be sure to have an Excel license on your computer because you need Excel to use the design table. As well, before we get started, be sure to go to the description and download the part we're going to be using for this episode. And with that out of the way, let's get right into SolidWorks. Before we get into design tables, let's take a look at the part itself. Again, in the description, there is a link to download the part file. We can see that some of the features have some issues. Let's use the rollback bar to go back to our first feature and try to diagnose the issues we have. Before we take a look at this specific issue, let's quickly talk about the error and warning signs that show up inside of SolidWorks. An error is an issue that affects only the part itself. For example, a feature may not be able to be created, or if it is already created, it is not able to edit the model itself. Errors are shown in a red octagon. Warnings are issues that present themselves as things that will still allow a feature or sketch to work, but should not be left as is, as they can cause other features or sketches to fail and can eliminate original design intent built into the part. For example, a sketch may have no possible geometric solutions, has conflicts with other items in the sketch, or simply is referencing dangling geometries. We will get more into what these mean soon. A warning is shown with a yellow triangle. On a rebuild of a SOLIDWORKS part, the What's Wrong tab will show up informing you if you have any of these warning messages or error messages so you can diagnose them yourself. The issue here seems to be in the sketch, so let's open it up. Dimensions or relations highlighted in this bright yellow indicate that they are in conflict with other dimensions or relations, whereas in red, it means there are no possible geometric solutions, meaning that there is no sketch that can exist with that dimension or relation active pertaining to what is in red. These are the first two warnings we mentioned, no solutions and item conflicts. These two warnings often occur at the same time as they are somewhat related. We see that the dimension of our circle is defined twice. Deleting one of these dimensions by right-clicking and selecting delete should solve the issue by eliminating the conflict between the two dimensions defining the circle. This of course was a simple example. Sometimes with more complex sketches, it can be hard to find the cause of the conflict or inability for a solution to be found. The most important thing to remember is that we do not want any yellow or red relations and dimensions which are part of the issue. This means that once a dimension or just any property of a sketch is defined in some way, either directly or through a series of relations, for example, a perpendicular relation defining 90 degrees, it is important we do not redefine it. Of course, there are other reasons for these messages to show up, especially once we look at assemblies, but for now, this is a good rule of thumb to get you started. SolidWorks will almost always warn you if you're about to create a warning or error, but if the sketch is already broken, let's say by a fellow coworker, it may take some time to find the cause of the issue. Using the yellow and red highlights are great places to start. Let's bring the rollback bar to the bottom. Since the rest of our unsuppressed features look okay, let's take a look at these suppressed features as they may hold some issues that will arise once we unsuppress them. First, let's suppress all other cut features under them as we know they are okay. Once we unsuppress the keyed bore, we can see the feature cannot be made. This seems to be an issue with the sketch, as in the feature, there are not any issues. Then, let's open the sketch. We don't see any glaring issues with conflicts or solutions, but let's use the repair sketch button to see if there are any gaps in the sketch that aren't allowing a contour to be made, which means the sketch is open. We can see a very small gap that is being made on the left side of the intersection between the arc and the line. We can simply select both points by holding control and selecting them and making them merge together, giving them a coincident relation, which will close the sketch and fix our issue. Lastly, let's unsuppress the hex bore. There are two independent issues happening here. Firstly, the cut feature does not intersect part volume. That is to say, since the keyed bore is cutting out everything the hex would cut out in the first place, there is nothing for the hex to cut and thus there is an error with the cut. By suppressing the keyed bore, that fixes the issue. This is not a major issue with the design of the part, as we will never have a configuration 
where both the keyed and hex bore are activated. So, now that the error is fixed, let's take a look into the sketch. There are no conflicts or warnings, but in the What's Wrong menu that pops up to help us diagnose the issue, it mentioned dangling sketch entities. This means there is a reference in the sketch to something outside of this sketch that does not exist anymore. For example, a different sketch could have been used to define a part of this sketch, such as the center point of the hex, which is the case here, and that sketch was deleted, leaving it dangling. It may be hard to see, but the center point of the hex is a dark yellow color. This means that the entity has dangling relations. We can click the point to see it has a coincident relation highlighted in a dark yellow color. This relation is the cause of our trouble. We can simply delete this relation and redefine the center point of our hexagon to be the origin of our part, which then fixes the issue. Let's exit the sketch to see everything is fixed. I will suppress the hex and unsuppress some other features so that we have a part we want to begin our design table with. So now that our part is fixed and ready to go, we can create a design table. Design tables are Excel tables that are used to control configurations of a part. Because you're using a table, creating changes to configurations is much quicker than configuring features inside of SOLIDWORKS. To create one, we can go into the top of SOLIDWORKS, right click, select toolbars, and add in the tables toolbar. Then we can select the design table button. There are a few options to create our design table. Auto create takes all of our existing configurations and dimensions and allows us to pick and choose which dimensions we add into the table. Blank creates a blank design table where the dimensions and features are added in manually. Lastly, the from file takes an existing Excel file that is set up to be a design table and uses that to create the different configurations. There are a few more options to select in the design table creation, but let's look at these later once we have a grasp of what the design table really does. Even though auto create may be a bit easier for the creation of the table, Blank will allow us to have a little bit more control at the creation, so we will use that to create our table. In the pop-up menu that appears, we won't select anything, not even the default configuration, as we want to create our own configurations in the part. Here's how the design table is laid out. The first row holds the name of the design table, as simple as that. Then underneath that row is where all of the dimensions, properties, and features are listed. In this column, we can list all of our configurations. Here we have a first instance created, but we can delete this and create our own. Let's create some configurations called forearm, five arm, and six arm. Then we can add in some features and dimensions we want to control. First, let's get the rotation instance dimension for how many arms there are. To do this, let's exit the design table. Right click the annotation folder and select show feature dimensions. This allows us to see annotations such as dimensions in the graphics area so that we can select them once we are in our design table. Then to reopen our design table, we can go to the configuration manager, see that a design table has been created and right click and select the edit table to open it back up. Then I'll highlight cell B2, double click the instance rotations, and that is the first dimension we can control. I have set up all related dimensions to be equations in the sketch based on this instance dimension, such as the angle between each arm, which is 360 degrees divided by the instance rotation, so the only major dimension we have to control is the instance number inside of the design table. Then we can add in some features, which will allow us to control whether they are suppressed or unsuppressed. I will go through and add every feature we have created, excluding the base feature that is always unsuppressed. Then I can simply assign under the instance dimension column a 4, 5, and 6 for the 4, 5, and 6 arm configurations. I will leave the feature states the same for all three configurations as we can alter them and add more configurations later. Then if we exit the design table, we can see our three configurations and open them to see that they in fact do work. We also notice that our default configuration is still around. This is because configurations can be added by themselves outside of the design table. The icon for the default configuration is different from the design table configuration as it is not in our design table. We can simply delete the default configuration as we do not need it. Now let's say we want to add a derived configuration in the design table. How would we accomplish this? We need to add a property into the second row of our design table, which is called parent. 
This gives the configuration data as to what its parent configuration is. We can add this in, then let's create a new configuration called 6ARM hex bore. We can unsuppress the hex bore feature and suppress unneeded features, as well making sure the ARM count is 6. Then, under the parent property, we can add the name of the 6ARM configuration to be its parent. If we exit the design table, we can see that the derived configuration is added under the 6ARM design table configuration. Now let's get back into the properties of the design table so we can understand what other controls we have. To edit the design table feature, let's right click it and select edit feature. Under edit control, there are two selections. On top, this will allow us to change dimensions or features inside of SolidWorks while allowing the changes to update in the design table. For example, I could suppress a feature in one configuration active without using the design table and it would update the next time I open the design table. Under that, we have this option, block edits, which would not allow us to change any dimension, feature or property in SOLIDWORKS that is defined in the design table when the configuration of a design table is open. In the settings, we can control if new rows are added for new parameters and configuration and as well allow us to have warning for new updates to the table and lastly, this option allows us to have drop-down menus. In segment two of the CSWP exam, it will expect you to be able to open up parts of an existing design table and possibly using existing Excel tables provided to you to turn it into a design table for a given part. We will be covering this in the practice of the next episode. Thanks for watching episode seven of Zero to CSWP. I really hope you learned something and that you're able to use design tables in your parts. In the next episode, we're going to be doing practice for what you need to know on segment two of the CSWP exam, which will cover what we learned in this episode and the one prior. So, I'll see you in that video.